Jantar Mantar, which is now the preferred site of political protest and hunger strikes in Delhi, was actually built 300 years ago in 1724 as one of the five observatories of Maharaja Jai Singh II of Jaipur. He had built these observatories to measure the movement of planets, the moon, the sun, the stars in the solar system, based on the principles of Surya Siddhant, which postulated a spherical Earth whose prime meridian passed through Avantika or Avanti, which was the earlier name of Ujjain, and Rotika, Rotika, which is the old name for Rotak. And the Surya Siddhant had a method by which the local time in any locality would be linked to the time in Ujjain, because the movement of the sun and the moon were the determining factors, and the Panchang of India was based on the Luni solar model. That is, they were looking both at the rising and the setting of the sun and the moon. The Mughals really had no problem with this way of measuring time. But when the British became the imperial power, the power which proclaimed that the sun never set on their empire, so they wanted to measure time, not with reference to Ujjain, but with reference to Greenwich, which was an observatory near London. And that is why the Greenwich mean time also became the global standard. Now, readers may recall, or you know, as all of us know, that we changed the name of AD and BC. You know, it used to be before Christ and after death. Now it's called the CE and the BCE, that is common era and before common era. Likewise, the GMT is today called the UTC, which is the universal coordinated time. But what I'm going to tell you is that we had three presidencies uh, which were set up by the East India Company. And all these three presidencies wanted to measure their time with reference to the Greenwich mean time. And therefore, all the three presidencies had different times. So Calcutta was five hours, 53 minutes, and 20 seconds ahead of GMT. Madras was five hours, 21 minutes, and 14 seconds ahead, while the Bombay clocks were five hours, four minutes, and 15 seconds ahead to the GMT. Now, this was all fine, but as the railway network became very important, and I wanted to share with all of you that between 1853 to 1903, for example, in these five decades, the railways had a very extensive network throughout the country. And, you know, the railways now stretch from Peshawar to Quetta to Chaman on the Afghanistan border to the port cities of Karachi, Bombay, Travandrum, Waltar, and Madras, going all the way up to the Sadia in the Northeastern Frontier Agency. Of course, the railways also connected most of the important cantonments of those times. Jalandhar, Ambala, Babina, Secunderabad, for example, the provincial capitals of Lucknow, Lahore, Patna, Katak, Jabalpur, industrial cities like Kanpur, uh, those talking points for commodities like Kohati, Siliguri, Kuntur, pilgrim centers like Benares, Allahabad, Nashik, and the larger princely states like Hyderabad and Baroda, they also had their own railway systems. And therefore, a railway timetable had to be created. Now, because the Madras time was intermediate to the Bombay time and the Calcutta time, so the Madras time was considered to be the railway standard time, which was the precursor to the IST. Now, it led to a major confusion because along with the railway timetable, you had to issue a supplement which ran into 44 pages to describe the local variations of time. How would a train start? What would be the time that it will reach a particular station with reference to that particular presidency? And therefore, uh, in 1899, 
uh, at the annual conference of the Asiatic Society of India, which was held in Calcutta, uh, the first proposition that we should have an Indian standard time that came up. And uh, this suggestion was made to the governor general in council. And it took them about four or five years, in fact, six years before Kurzan agreed to having an Indian standard time. Now, <clears throat> it's easier to say that we'll have an Indian standard time. But how do you measure and how do you decide which meridian to be used for Indian standard time? Now, the traditional city or Ujjain, Mahakal, the city of the great Shiva, that could have been one choice. But it was not really the center of the positions of the Indian Empire at that time. And therefore, this city or the, the, the meridian that was chosen was the one which passed through Allahabad. And it was the 82.5 degrees longitude where the zero road fell. And that is the place where the clock tower was set up. And that is from where the Indian standard time is measured. Incidentally, I got interested in the zero road and in the IST because of my research on Lal Bahadur Shastri. Uh, he had first set up his residence there in 1928 uh, when he was still working for the Servants of People Society at the princely sum of rupees 105 per month. This is how I started getting interested in this, in this, in the sole concept of, of zero road and the IST. And incidentally, uh, for a few years, still a few years after independence, in fact, from 1947 to 1951, uh, Pakistan, both West Pakistan and East Pakistan, accepted the IST in their normal course of business. But in 1951, uh, we had the West Pakistan Standard Time and we had the East Pakistan Standard Time. And the East Pakistan Standard Time was, of course, the Bangladesh Standard Time now. And the West Pakistan Time was one hour ahead of us. And uh, uh, so, oh, sorry, 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes behind us, and the Bangladesh time is one hour ahead of us. Uh, so, easier said than done. Uh, we had uh, our own IST set up, uh, and this IST had been set up in 1906, but the Bombay and Calcutta presidencies had not accepted it. So, we had from 1906 to 1947, we had the IST which was used by the railways and the All India Radio and by the government departments. And there was also the, the local time in Bombay and Calcutta, though Madras had accepted the IST. So it required the persuasion of Sardar Patel, none else than Sardar Patel, who then wrote to the governors of uh, or the governments of uh, both West Bengal and uh, Bombay that, look, it's time that you adopted uh, the IST. Uh, this entire thing has been covered by Devishish Das in his uh, remarkable article called Introduction of IST, a Historical Survey. And therefore, he says that we have to credit Patel not just with integrating the princely states into the Indian Union, but also with getting the political leadership of Bengal and Bombay to accept the Indian Standard Time. Uh, while Bengal uh, accepted the IST uh, with, uh, with great dignity and grace. There was a major challenge in Bombay. And Bombay, when it accepted IST in the midnight of 14th March, 1950, the Times of India reported, quote, clocks in all the municipal offices in Bombay were advanced by 39 and a half minutes on Tuesday evening as the 44-year-old battle of clocks came to an end. The move followed the unanimous approval of a resolution by the Bombay Municipal Corporation recommending that standard time be adopted for all and within the municipal areas. Now, given the very large span of India, uh, there have been requests occasionally from uh, the government of Assam and informally by other state governments that why don't we have a separate time zone for the Eastern region? Because we need to leverage daylight savings and why should we not advance uh, the IST by one hour? Uh, but as of March 2020, this was not accepted by the government of India. Uh, but for the record, there is the Plantations Labor Act of 1951, 
uh, which is uh, which is what has led to the Chai Bagan time because it authorizes the, uh, the 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 state governments to define and set the local time for particular industrial areas, and that is how the three districts in Assam have been following a time zone which is called the Chai Bagan time, which is one hour ahead. Now, uh, the counter argument is that look, if France can have 13 time zones, and if Russia and the US can have 11 each, along with daylight savings, why should India not discuss at least the pros and cons of this issue? Uh, friends, over the last three days, ever since the publication of this uh, news item, of, of this opinion piece, I've had a lot of, uh, uh, I've had a lot of uh, correspondence, I've had a lot of uh, feedback uh, from friends across the country. So they've all suggested that rather than have time zones, why don't we extend the domain of the Plantations Labor Act? Why can't government offices, educational institutions in the Northeast open and are ahead of schedule? After all, uh, the, the, after all the government offices in Assam and Bengal can open at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. instead of opening at the conventional time, which is currently being used. So my suggestion is that rather than have different time zones in the country, we can advance the functioning of government offices and educational institution in the Northeast to be more aligned uh, with the with the rising of the morning sun. Uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure uh, writing this and researching this. Thank you.